Watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome to Capital Connection. I'm Mark Maxwell. Illinois state finances are a mess, but just how bad are they really? Every year, the state publishes the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR. It came out earlier this year, about a year late. In it, though, we find that the state is catching up on paying down its big stack of unpaid bills, largely because we're borrowing money to do it. And even after that big income tax increase back in 2017, the state's deficits are still growing larger. This is the state's comprehensive annual financial report that tells you what the financial um, health of the state of Illinois is. Comptroller Susanna Mendoza's office released the state's annual fiscal report card after Auditor General Frank Montino's office put the finishing touches on several state audits. One big takeaway, a ballooning deficit. Ours had a um, decline of about $6.4 billion. This report reviewed the first fiscal year after the 2017 income tax hike from 3.75% up to 4.95, where it is today. How are we taking in more money but still losing more okay. That's a great question that you've asked. The Auditor General used to be a House Democrat. He says state lawmakers, including his former colleagues, need to find ways to cut spending. The increase in the deficit shows there's more work to do in reducing spending while incomes and revenues rise. Your headline takeaway from the 2018 CAFR was that Illinois cut its deficit in half in <laughs> fiscal year 2018. But Auditor uh, General Frank Montino, a former House Democrat, I believe a former colleague of yours, he told us the state's deficit grew by $6 billion in that same year. Well, remember that we're looking at uh, we're looking at the the general fund is what the headline was referring to in the context of the bill backlog that we have. Right at the time that that report covers, we had originally, you know, I guess it was in 2017, had at the height of the bill backlog about almost 17 billion dollar backlog, and this headline refers to during that time it was brought down by about half. Since then, it's actually gone on a little bit more. We're down to about today 6.9 almost 7 billion by next week it'll come down a little bit more as we pay some bills but that headline is specific just to the actual backlog of unpaid bills and that was largely accomplished by borrowing money remember it's uh, let's be clear it's not just borrowing money actually reducing the state's long-term liabilities because we didn't borrow money at um, to pay bills that we were paying no interest on we borrowed that money at three and a half percent to pay to only pay down bills that we were paying 12% interest on. So that bonding deal, which sure is borrowing money, actually is going to save taxpayers between four and six billion dollars. And for people who, who look at it as just borrowing, I'd say, well, you borrow every day when you pay your mortgage, unless if you've paid it off already. And if you could refinance your mortgage from 12% to three and a half, you'd be crazy not to jump at that. You'll eventually be saving money and that's why you would do that. I would not have been supportive of borrowing just to pay down bills that we'd incurred, uh, unless if we're actually saving taxpayer money in the process, which is exactly what we did here. Uh, critics at the Champaign News Gazette and at the Chicago Tribune have accused you of putting a rosy spin on the CAFR. Uh, look, I, I'm not putting a rosy spin. I do think that it's positive that we've slashed the bill backlog by more than half, right? So that is good news. Even critics should still acknowledge that we are paying more than half less than what we did a year ago. That's a positive thing, and I, I certainly want the markets to understand that Illinois is moving in the right direction, and I believe that they understand that and they have um, as much said so. Now, do we still have problems? Of course, and I'm the first person to say that while there's some really good things happening, we still have a huge unfunded pension liability, for example. There's still um, many areas fiscally that we need to improve upon, and Illinois, while we're moving in the right direction, as I say many times, um, look, we're not out of the woods yet. We can start to see some light between the trees, which is certainly much better than it was two years ago, but we're not out of the woods yet, and there's still a lot of challenges fiscally for our state. In past years in the CAFR, you've pointed to the net position, which yeah. is like the total ledger sheet of, of the assets and liabilities and uh, mm -hmm. all that. In the last two years, that's gotten worse. We've, our deficits on that metric have grown worse over the last two years. Well, remember that we didn't have a budget for two years. So when we're looking at the net 
position, we were talking about these are the consequences of having a 736-day budget crisis too, right? Where you had thousands of people lose, over a million people actually lose state services, where you had thousands of businesses impacted and non-for-profits closing doors. So the the impetus behind what we talked about in that CAFR would have, of course, been focused on the lack of a budget for two years and what the consequences of that were. We're now in a better position in terms of we have budgets. Uh, like I said, the markets look favorably on that. We've also slashed our bill backlog, and at the same time, over the course of that 12-year deal, we're going to be saving four to six billion dollars. We still have a huge unfunded pension liability. Uh, this year, we actually have about four billion dollars less of pension liability. It's not because we've managed the finances better. It's frankly because the economy has been so strong. But we'd still rather be there than worse off, right? So again, the CAFR is just a report that we share every year. And it's a full picture of what the finances were for that one specific year. By the time the public sees it, even if it were delivered right on time, is essentially already out of date by six months in right. the best of cases. Um, and what our position is today is, of course, different than what that report was um, when we published it. Now, having said that, Every year we're going to be talking about different aspects of the CAFR. We're not always in every press release going to be talking about the exact same part of the CAFR. The important thing that the public needs to know is that everything about our finances is in that document. And in our press release, we try to do our best to have a balanced press release. Of course, we had a good title to talk about, which is having slashed the bill backlog in half. But within that same press release, we also talked about some of the, the bad highlights of what our fiscal condition is. And it's important that we be honest with the public, and we have been. So Fiscal year 19 is already over. Fiscally, yes. And that's correct. That CAFR, we have not, not seen yet. Correct. Do yet, but uh, yeah. it, it's. That'll be for uh, the last uh, part of, so six months of the Rounder administration and six months of the Pritzker administration is what the next CAFR would be essentially talking about. Right. Is there any indication yet what the net position of the state was after that? No, because remember, like, I, I can't actually say a number like that because um, those numbers I can report through a CAFR once they've been fully audited and verified by the Auditor General, which is hence, again, why the CAFR was once again again late this year because um, while our office puts the report together, our office cannot actually do the report until those numbers are fully audited. Those are state agency financials that gets um, sent to the Auditor General and then the Auditor General has to do a full and complete audit, a deep dive into those numbers. Once they finalize their report, then they send that to the controller's office and we do the report. So as long as these uh, things do not move as quickly as they should, there's always going to be holdups. And that's something that I'd like to see change for the future. And I'm, I'm not going to be a spectator on it. I'm going to drive the process of changing the CAFR to make sure that we get it done on time. And I'm going to ask you about that delay in a moment. But yeah. before I do, I want to circle back to one thing you said. Uh, the years 2017 and 2018 are both years when the state did have a budget. Despite having Governor Rauner in office, yes. we had a budget. There was an income tax increase. And even over that two-year span, the state's net position deficit still grew. How is that possible? Well, we were still recovering, and we're going to continue to from the, the impact of the budget impasse. I mean, we still have a lot of, uh, there was a lot of deficit spending that had happened, right, during that budget impasse that had gone unaccounted for. The only reason we even in knew prior it, years. Yeah, in prior years, but still, that, that affects the next year's budget, right? So um, when we finally started to be able to release payments into all the different vendors that we have, right? Uh, that was in large part only because we had the bond deal that we did. So the budget itself uh, didn't do, the, the, the help that the budget gave us to be able to pay down some of these bills was the bond deal. But we'd incurred so much liabilities in terms of late payment interest penalties, over a billion dollars worth in the one extra year. So you start off the next year already a billion in the hole there. Not to mention that that prior year also started off with uh, over two and a half billion dollar um, deficit spending tag that we had talked about on plenty of these interviews, right? So the good news is we're starting to see more transparency as to what our actual liabilities really are. The bad news is is that they're higher than we would have anticipated or at least the public was aware of until we had some of these transparency initiatives come into play. Comptroller Mendoza, thanks for joining us. You got it. Thanks for having me. When we come back, a closer look at the state's staggering pile of pension debt and the pressure it puts on cities to cut back on police officers and firefighters. What the next chapter of Illinois' pension saga could be next.